Well, how are you doing? Thank you so much for joining me for another math lesson with Mr. Woodford. Today, I'll be going over uh, objective 6.5 percent error with my math seven students. So if you're joining me right now, feel free to uh, click on the link in our Google Classroom page to be able to look at the same worksheet with me. Or you can uh, scan the codes on top of our worksheets to be able to follow us on what we're doing today. So without any delay, let's dive right into the worksheet. So we're talking about percent error today. Uh, as it is mentioned in the actual seventh grade next generation standards, we're gonna talk about calculating percent error of different values. Um, and we're gonna discuss what it is and why percent error is always positive. Um, and what I would like you to do is start off today as usual, I'd like you to start working on the bell work, please. Let me give you guys a couple minutes, take this time, pause the video and try to work on the bell work. Calculate the percent decrease and the percent increase of these two problems. All right, I'm hoping that you was able to get through that. Uh, as usual, I'm hoping that everybody has a calculator with them, has something to write with, has some paper additional, unless you're writing on the actual worksheet, that's okay, right? Um, but I'm gonna go over one of these problems with you, not both, uh, but the concept for them is similar, okay? Let me go over number one. We're talking about a TV. A TV costs $499. They say they want you to find a new price with this TV after a 25% decrease or a 25% sale on that TV. So what I would wanna do first is figure out, okay, well, what is 25% of $499? And the way that we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna figure out, okay, well, what is, what is 25%? $4.99. And notice what I did with this 25% is I turned it into a decimal by moving that decimal two spaces to the left. Well, you could divide it by 100 because remember 25% is really 25 over 100. So we get 499 multiplied by 0.25. And that's going to give us $124.75. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is not our answer. This does not mean the TV now costs you $124. That is not true. Remember, we're finding the new price of the TV after a 25% sale. This means that what's taking off of the TV price is actually gonna be $124.75. So if I want to find the new price of my TV, I would do $4.99, hey buddy, minus 124.75. And this would give us the new price of our TV. Okay, this is the new price of our TV, which is $374 and 25 cents. Notice I did a decrease here, a minus, in comparison to B, where it's talking about increasing, make sure you add the 30% to the actual original miles, okay? This is how you calculate increase and decrease, which we have done in the past already, but I wanted to make sure that you uh, refresh yourself on it, because we're gonna be talking about percent error today, all right? And just to check your answer for B, you should have got 26 miles, okay? All right, let's dive into the essential question, the visualized vocabulary, and of course, the modeling. All right, now how do you see percentages of described change, right? Uh, we're gonna be talking about describing change because in this case, right, we're talking about percent error. And there are times where you may estimate something and how many people might be somewhere, but the actual might be different. And we could talk about the percent change and say, okay, well, you was off by this much percent or you was close by this much percent. And that's called percent error. Right, it's the difference between the estimated and the actual values that are represented as a percent. Um, uh, the formula that we're gonna be using today is actually right here in Visualize Vocabulary. It says difference is equal to percent error multiplied by actual. Now we have to find percent error. So believe it or not, we don't know percent error. So whenever you see that in the formula here, that's what we're gonna really be solving for. And I'll show you exactly how to do that in a little bit. All right, let's go on to the modeling. Now, Sean estimated that the attendance at a college lacrosse game was 3,000 people. The actual attendance, however, was 3,296 people. What is the percent error of Sean's estimate round to the nearest whole percent? So I wanna, I wanna, obviously we're reading a word problem here. Feel free to get out your highlighter, right? Highlight some things. I'm gonna highlight this word estimated, 3,000. Actual, 3,296. I know these are big things and I know we're also looking for percent error. Right, so these are the things I'm looking for. And of course, I wanna make sure I know that they want me to round here to the nearest whole percent. Okay, now what I'm gonna use from this information is I'm actually gonna write out a little sketch for myself uh, or just some notes, right? Estimated, I'm gonna put over here and I'm gonna write that as, um, uh, 
I'm sorry about this little glitch here. I, I clicked the button that I know I shouldn't have clicked. I'm going to write the number right next to estimated there, which in this case is going to be 3,000. Underneath that, I'm going to put actual. And I am abbreviating, right? 3,296. So those are big deals. Now, if you look at the formula, the formula, first thing in the formula says difference, right? It says difference is equal to percent error multiplied by actual. And I apologize if you hear my kids. Uh, you guys know I'm home with them. So they are making some wonderful noise. All right, difference is equal to uh, percent error times actual. And we need to find the percent error. So we don't know this PE, or you just write it as P. I am think I'm just gonna change that just to P at this moment instead of PE, right? Uh, and multiplied by actual. So let's fill it in. What is the difference? The difference between the estimated and the actual. Now, what I would like to do for this to help you guys is what you could do is you could do absolute value if you want. You could do 3,000 minus 3,296 and then the absolute value. But because we're calculating the difference, just do the bigger number minus the small number. That's okay. So let's do the bigger number minus the small number is equal to percent error, which we don't know, multiplied by actual. Now, the actual here is going to be 3,296. Okay. Your actual is always gonna be here. The difference between the two is always gonna be on the left and percent error we're looking for, okay? This is gonna give us 296 on this side. It's equal to percent error multiplied by 300, 200, uh, 3,296. Now there's only one more step to find the percent error. And that last step is to divide because we wanna get P by itself, right? Remember when we solve one-step equations, we wanna get the variable by itself and we say, okay, what's next to the variable? In this case, it's 3,296. Let's divide both sides by that. And we end up getting the percent error is equal to this very small decimal. It looks like 0.089. Uh, uh, but remember, this is a decimal. We do need to turn it into a percent. So we're going to move that decimal over two spaces to the right. We get 8.9. But because they want us to round to the nearest whole percent, let's just say 9%. That is the percent error here. Percent error is 9%. Now, I want to talk about this for a little bit. Now, what does this mean? This means that when he made his estimate, he was off by 9%. He was off by 9%. Now, just because he was he put under 3,000 and it was over that, right? Um, that doesn't, that's not the reason why it's a positive. It's always going to be a positive error percent because even if he estimated 3,000 and it was under 3,000, he would still be close to it by a small amount. Yes. I want to Okay, Daddy's almost done right now. Let me just ask them if they have any questions, all right? And then I'll help you, all right? So this is how we calculate percent error. Once again, find the estimated, find the actual, calculate the difference of the two. It's equal to percent error, which we don't know yet, multiply by actual, follow the steps that I did here. You're gonna divide, find the percent error, turn it into a percent, and if it asks you to round to the nearest whole percent, make sure you do that as well, all right? Uh, take your time, look back over the video if you need to. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them inside of the actual um, Google Classroom page. I would love to help you out. Thank you guys so much for once again watching, and I'm hoping that it was helpful. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.